Hi everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and today we are going to play with some new to me acid dye colors in some warm tones. And we're going to use a little bit of these dye powders to sprinkle them on to some yarn to get a sense of what the hues are like. Today we're going to look at two browns, Jacquard Brown and Dharma Espresso Bean. We're going to look at Cherry Bomb, which I think is probably a warm red, Fluorescent Fuchsia, Fluorescent Safety Orange, and Tangelo. In our dedicated dye pan, I just added 100 grams of Knit Picks Stroll Fingering Weight Yarn. And I'm adding four cups of water. I'm not sure if I might want more for this um, fairly low immersion setup. Um, but actually, this four cups seems pretty good. I am now going to add three tablespoons of white vinegar. I do want the colors to strike relatively quickly, um, but I also don't mind if they spread a ton. But I am really curious to get a sense of the relative hue difference between these different colors. If you'd like to learn more about the yarn, which is 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon, uh, the nylon zip tie I'm using, or the steam pan, you can find affiliate links in the video description. Whenever I am dealing with dye powders, I will be wearing a respirator or a face mask, safety glasses, and gloves. And all of the equipment I'm using is dedicated dye equipment and is not used for food. In between each color, I will wash and dry my gloves so that way I don't contaminate any of the colors because I am going directly into the containers. The first color I want to do is Jacquard Brown. Um, this does look like a nice warm brown. Um, and I'm not going to use a spoon to sort of scrub this out. I do see, it looks like there's some blue speckles in this brown. Um, now, seeing multicolored speckles is not really an indica indicator if a color will break. Um, all this really does is tell us that the color is sort of made as a combination of different colors. Next, let's look at Derma Expresso Bean, um, which does look, just from the powder, like it could be a cooler toned brown. But I won't really know until I come and wiggle it out. And oh, actually, that is very purple. Uh, I was expecting this to be brown. What? I mean, that does not really. I guess, okay, maybe in the darkest section. I don't know. That looks purple. I might have to go and look up and see, like, what other people have to say about this color. Because this definitely looks brown to me. This looks purple. It's very warm tone. But it definitely looks purple. I'm excited to go look at the color chart for that. Let's take a look at the fluorescent safety orange. Um, I am expecting this color to be really, really bright. Uh, I mean, it is a fluorescent. Um, and of course, you know, where we're seeing the colors like in the center, that does look a little red, but the edges are looking more orange. There was a lot of dye that I sort of poked in there. Maybe I need to be careful to use like a little less, but so I'm sort of spreading it out. And that's giving us a sense of what this orange is like. As I wipe off my spoon, sort of here on this other end. Now let's take a look at Tangelo. And the powder is looking pretty brown. Um, just get a tiny bit, but you know, the fluorescent, nice labeled as fluorescent, I believe, do fluoresce 
And Tangelo, I mean, this is just sort of like a nice reddish orange. And again, like the center of these colors are fairly saturated. So I'm gonna take lighter, hmm. Yeah, there's no question that this is a brighter orange than that one. Let's take a look at fluorescent fuchsia. Uh, this might sort of stand out from the group. I'm taking a little bit on the back of a dedicated dye fork and whoa! I mean this one, if you look at it, you're like, okay, yeah, <laughs> that looks neon to me. Um, the <laughs> The fluorescent safety orange did not have this like neon feel, but this does, this does feel fairly neon. And then finally, we have cherry bomb. Getting some on the end. Down. And Clean off my spoon a bit. Come and wiggle this out. So cherry bomb, yeah, we've got, you know, it's a fairly, it's a pinkish red. Um, I mean, I could have added more of it here. It is definitely a red. I'm now curious, I don't have a ton of space on here, but maybe I can come and add another red. I'm gonna take a pinch with my hand. Here's like a tiny bit of some fire engine red. And let's see how that compares to that cherry. Um, interesting. The fire engine red, which in some respects felt like kind of cool toned to me, feels a hair warmer than the cherry. I'm really curious now to like go and look and see what all these different colors look like on the color chart. Here are some thoughts on the colors. If I look at espresso bean and compare it to pecan or chocolate brown, it definitely does have these purple undertones to it. Fire Engine Red is up there and Cherry Bomb is down here. They are really, really close to one another here and I think in the pan. Here's the fire engine red, there is the cherry bomb. The fire engine red does lean a little bit pink. In terms of warmth, I don't know. I think that they're both really good reds and the difference is really, really subtle. Here's the fluorescent safety orange and there is the tangelo. And here they are on the color chart. We've got Tangelo and the Fluorescent Safety Orange, um, which, you know, if you compare the Fluorescent Lemon to the Fluorescent Safety Orange, this doesn't necessarily feel like neon to me, but I feel like they feel relatively true to this chart. Um, similar, but the you know, the, bright, the fluorescent safety orange is definitely like a brighter true orange. The fluorescent fuchsia looks bright and really nice. I don't think I have any other pinks from Derma. Uh, it does seem a bit brighter than say Jacquard pink, which I haven't thrown down in comparison, but I'm really happy with that pink. Now we have this yarn with a bunch of bright, well, I guess this one isn't technically bright, but with a lot of saturated warm tones and still a lot of white. So I'm gonna to wanna to take some of these dry powders, speckle them on, flip the yarn, speckle them on, to sort of bring some cohesion to just our color swatch test uh, yarn. All right, I'm going in for some of this espresso bean first. I know it's one of the darker colors that we used, but I feel like we can use it in some sort of heavy speckles and splotches of color to help tie everything in together a bit. So I'm adding like the speckling stuff on now, but after a minute I am going to try to help these colors sink in and spread out a bit. Okay. 
So I'm not going for like true speckles, if that makes sense. All right, next I'm reaching for some of this fuchsia, uh, fluorescent fuchsia, pardon me. I feel like that this is another shade in here that stands out, and so I want some more of those pink hits, hints sort of around our yarn. Okay, next I'm back to some Tangelo. I know since I haven't really touched this yet that some of these colors will give us some speckles and then when I go in they might blend and stuff a bit more but I want some more of this yellow to kind of come around. Goodness, I feel like maybe we're going to end up wanting some brown but let's start sort of spreading out these colors a bit. And what this is doing is by mixing them with water, they were removing some of that white in the area. We're still low immersion, um, but it's causing things to sort of spread out a bit more. And actually, some of these layers on top of each other do give a pretty nice brown feel. But the areas that you always sort of want to pay attention to when it comes to dyeing like this are areas around ties. I really like this fish turner. I think that's what it technically is I got from Bed Bath & Beyond. I think it does a really, really good job at gently sort of pressing our yarn in. This is really fun. I don't play with colors like this a ton here on the channel. Um, I tend to be like a cool toned kind of person, but I am really, really enjoying this. I think when we flip, um, if I feel like I, well, I'll definitely add some color to the other side. I feel like the, some of the colors I might reach for might be the brown and maybe some of the red, but I am going to turn some of the heat back up um, and let this gently bubble for about think about five minutes, and then I might come and add a tiny bit more water to the pan. It's been five minutes, and there is there is a lot of color in here. You can see it over in the edge. Um, actually, I might bring some of you over here towards that center. Let's add some more water to our pan. I'm bringing over four cups. I'm not sure if I'm gonna add all of it, but this will help some of these colors reach a bit more of the yarn and also make sure we don't um, make sure help make sure that we don't uh, burn anything okay so I've added about three cups I think um, yeah I've added about three cups and let's go ahead and add a little more vinegar uh, to sort of help our yarn one two, three. And again, this is a lot of vinegar in here. I did add a lot of dye. It'll take a bit of time. I don't wanna shake things up too, too, too much. Um, and as you see, I haven't flipped yet, but that's because there's just still a ton of color in here that isn't even close to exhausting. Um, ooh, I do see, sort of if I look over, that we have, do have some sections that have cleared a little bit. Um, so it could just be some hints around the edge. But I'm going to raise the heat um, and give this another five minutes. Layered, some of these espresso bean sections definitely feel a little brown, especially sort of mixed with the orange. But well, <laughs> it is no question purpley. Let's flip this. Okay, so the color that I was seeing were some pockets that um, just hadn't dissolved yet. We do have, and again, our acid is not, this is not like a low immersion project that we're doing today. We do have some white patches that I would like to take care of. I have nothing against with leaving white. Um, if you look at the Chemnitz Creations Etsy shop, you'll see quite a lot of white around, but 
Today I am just wanting something a bit different. Alright, on this side, I'm going to start with a little bit of cherry bomb. And I'm doing this sort of similar to what I was doing on the other side. Just this time we have more water in here already. So um, some of these colors will immediately start spreading out a lot more. Okay, next I want to go for some of this Jacquard Brown in some spots. Focusing on these paler areas. And then I want to go in with a tiny bit of some of this fluorescent safety orange just to bring some more yellow tones back in here. Mm. There we go. Okay, after washing my hands, I'm going to do what I did before and sort of just give this a little bit of access to some water. Now, I did use very different colors on the back side than what I had used on the front side. And in this kind of case, I think it's okay. The reason why this is not gonna feel incredibly unbalanced is that uh, this yarn is really spread out. These colors are able to sink through to the other layer. And, you know, that's just adding that element of coloration here. I am, some of the spoons that I used earlier have a tiny bit of dye on the back of them um, that is now wet because that's where I've been putting my um, spoons and forks but I'm just sort of going in and let's leave no dye behind poking to add some elements from some of these colors in areas where I think the yarn might need it but ultimately here we're getting this beautiful layered warm colorway that I think is really really cool <laughs> or maybe I should say it's really hot <laughs> I'm gonna go and let this sit for five minutes and then we'll move it around a bit to see if there's any areas that need more color five minutes are up and let's move around our yarn there is some color that isn't in yet but the areas that I want to pay attention to are these areas around these ties, which so far that one looks pretty good. Let's take a peek. I see some pale areas, but there's pale areas sort of in the middle of here as well. So I'm feeling really, really good. Um, there's a tiny bit of color left in here. But actually, even from just moving it, most of the color has come into our yarn. But one nice thing about moving it around is if there was some powder on here that hadn't dissolved yet, we can have that chance. But I think that this is sort of a fun example of how you can create some really nice layered colors without using a dye stock. While that can definitely help with layering your colors, it's not a requirement. Um, now, I am, I think I'm just going to let this sort of sit in here. We're just below a simmer for 10 more minutes, and then we'll remove the yarn. Let's take a closer look. Maybe I see a hint of color in here, but it's looking pretty cleared to me. I'm not going to turn off the heat completely and just let the yarn cool off in here for a little while. Um, and at some point I'll remove it off of the stove, but once it's cool completely, then we will wash it. Let's wash our hodgepodge orange, pink, and brown yarn. I'm really, really excited by this yarn. And I think that these are these warm colors are ones that I need to play with more in the future. I'm adding, this is more than a little bit of dish soap, just to see if we see any color bleeding, gives us some good swirls. Sometimes, uh, maybe there's a hint of bleeding in there. 
sometimes there can be like a tiny bit of dye that didn't dissolve. And sometimes you've got saturated colors and unbound dye just sitting in your yarn that needs to come out. So either way, it doesn't look like maybe the barest hint of bleeding, which it's really not much at all. But I'm going to go and rinse this probably three or four more times, trying to make sure there isn't significant bleeding, and then we'll hang it up to dry. I think that this is one of my favorite yarns that I've dyed in a long time. These colors are deep and really saturated and so, so warm. This isn't the kind of colorway that I reach for and is almost like there's like a neon sunset vibe to it. But I just really enjoy the interplay of these pinks and oranges and purples together with some hints of brown. What is also really impressive about this yarn, at least to me, is that this project started off as sort of a swatch test. I wanted to see how some of the new to me Dharma colors worked with each other. And so I took some vinegar, some bare yarn, and then I just added little bits of powder onto our yarn. And that let me get a sense, okay, you know, this, you know, this color is very purple and this color is very red. And that really does help um, get a feel and help me plan out projects better because it would be a real shame to pick a brown and expecting it to be sort of chocolatey to find that it's more purple when you really wanted that chocolate color. So, you know, I think that you could even fit more colors onto one sample just to get a sense of how they feel. Overall, these colors are very consistent with the color chart, especially if you compare them to one another. The things that I was able to see when looking at one color next to the other, those similarities were fairly true on the color chart. I do wish that they had arranged that poster where they had similar colors next to each other. So you could get a better, so it would make that comparison a little easier, but I don't know. No matter what, I'm happy because I have more information on some other colors that I want to purchase, but also on how I want to use these colors in some other projects going forward. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and if you enjoyed this video, make sure that you are subscribed to the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel. I release at least two new yarn dyeing videos every week, and we have a lot of fun. If you really like my approach uh, to dyeing and the way that I'm willing to just go for it and try new things, and you would like to help support us on a more personal level, you should check out the Chemnitz Patreon. Um, patrons can get early access to a new yarn dyeing video each month, behind the scenes sneak peeks, shout outs, advance notice of shop restocks, and more. It's so much fun and you really don't want to miss any of it. Finally, if you want to be up to date with some of my thoughts and moods, um, come and join the Chemnitz Lab Facebook group. It is a group for fans of Chemnitz where you can share your own dyeing and other fiber adventures, ask questions, and get input from me and other members of our wonderful community. I'll leave a link to that in the video description. Thank you so much for watching.